What's up everyone? All right, you probably didn't see me. I, I was just over there digging myself a hole. It's a huge hole, $16,000 deep. It's one of the biggest holes of all time. So uh, I gave myself a project for the month of June and good thing I like challenges because now I've got to work myself out of the hole. Down $16,000 in one day. What is wrong with me? Why was I so aggressive? I, I always do this. It's at the beginning of the month that I just try to come out, you know, <laughs> swinging for the fences and get that big strikeout. Uh, three trades today. First trade right out of the gates, down 2,700 bucks. Second trade, $9,000 loss. You know, I was trying to uh, bounce back a little bit from the first trade. Uh, second trade, I jumped in a little high. I chased it up. And, you know, in a strong market, I would have gotten away with it. Probably would have been able to make five, six thousand dollars on it in the market that we were in today. Boom, dropped right back down. I got stopped out. Third trade, I get in. I'm up seven thousand dollars. Do I take the profit? No, I don't take the profit because being up seven thousand when you're already down twelve grand isn't enough. That's how your head screws with you when you have a big red day. And when it came back down, I stopped out and got slippage on a 10,000 share position and lost another $4,000 down 16 grand on the day. Not a fun day, but we're gonna do our midday market recap just like we do every single day. So enjoy it, go through, you know, any questions you have, put them down below. I'll come back and answer them later this weekend. All right, so that's it for me. I'll see you guys back in the chat room Monday morning and hope you enjoy the midday market recap. All right, everyone, so we're gonna do our midday market recap, go over the trades from today. Uh, this, for me, was an ugly day. Worst day of the year. This is probably my worst day, of single day of trading in, this might be my second worst day ever. Um, I'm really, dis I'm disappointed. Uh, it's, it's a combination of things that went wrong and, um, you know, it's, it's what happens when you're too aggressive and when you trade with big size emotions start to get in you know start to factor in and uh, today i just made some um you know decisions i was being way, way too aggressive and uh you know you don't get to two hundred eighty thousand dollars on the year and you know by june 1st by being conservative you have to be aggressive and it's just always walking that line of being just aggressive enough to maximize profit and not too aggressive that you give back profit, you know, and that's, that's where it's, um, you know, it's always a little bit of a challenge. And sometimes uh, we cross that line and we're on the other side. And that's when, you know, you have those big losses. But, you know, you just don't really know where the line is until you start to cross it. And that's, that's the thing that I think most traders experience, probably every single one of us um, in the room um, have gone through it and, you know, had days where you're trying to capitalize on opportunities, you're trying to be aggressive and, you know, you, you just get knocked down. So I'm, I'm disappointed. This is not a good way to start the month, no doubt about it. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little sticky note right here over June 1st. And we're just going to pretend that day didn't even happen. And I'm going to start next Monday, fresh head, clean slate. Not going to worry about it. I'm not going to try to dig myself out of the hole. I'm just going to focus on Monday being a good day. And now, the month of June looks great. This is a good looking month. So we've got lots of opportunity here for a rebound. And, um, you know, yes, it, it is a red day. It's a disappointing day. But uh, you have to be able to uh, bounce back. And I've gotten knocked off the horse so many times. I'm used to hitting the ground and getting right back up. So I'll get right back up. It's, um, you know, not a big deal. 16,000 certainly is, seems like a lot of money. It is a lot of money. Uh, last month of this time, in two days, I made $60,000. So keep it in perspective. The, the, the numbers are big because the share size is big and um, you know that it's all relative. So for some of you guys who are beginner traders, 16,000 is maybe more than you'd make in six months of trading. And I remember when I was there, uh, but you know, you keep working at it, you'll get to the place where I'm at where six months of trading is a quarter million dollars, $300,000. And so losing 16 grand in one day, 
you know, yeah, if you think of it as how many, um, you know, Chipotle burritos you could have bought, it, it seems like a lot. But when you put it in the perspective of how much you've made and relative what that pullback is, it's actually not that bad. So I'm up 200, I was up $280,000 on the year be before today. So this is, you know, like a 5% pullback on my P&L. And that's not out of the range of what's tolerable for me. I've had pullbacks as sharp as about 20%. And that's, that's par for the course when you're, when you're being aggressive. So let's look at the trades from today. Uh, you guys are going to get to see the P&L of uh, a big loss, which, uh, you know, is fairly uncommon. Like I said, this will be probably the second biggest loss that I've ever had. The first biggest is $30,000. So the the green days have been getting bigger and bigger and bigger the longer I've been trading. But the red days get bigger and bigger also because I'm stepping up to the plate with some big size. So what happened today? Well, right off the watch list, we had two stocks. Jag X, which was a maybe. This one was only a maybe because... The float is awfully high. It's a um, 126 million share float, but it is a recent reverse split. The reverse split was today. And so as soon as, um, and let me put, sorry, let me switch screen share. Uh, as soon as um, the bell rang, it started to take off. And I didn't think it would, but, but it did. And so I jumped in it uh, as quickly as I could, but I got partial fills on it at 48 and 50. And then I added high, being a little aggressive at 70, still getting partial fills. And then I added more at 320 and 320 and 320. So my average ended up being 285, 288. So some of you guys got in at 250, which is, you know, where we were calling it out is a good entry, uh, the half dollar. And I was getting in way up here at $3. So I didn't get a very good entry on this. I had uh, 10,000 shares. It's halted, it resumes, and I add coming out of the halt right at 320, and then it instantly drops. Two minutes later, it's back at 206. So, you know, I mean, this is one of those things where 90% of the time, stocks that halt up going up open higher and continue. Uh, and this was one of those times where it halted going up and it resumed and it instantly turned around. And this happened uh, at some point earlier in the year. I don't remember the stock. I mean, it's happened a couple other times. Um, it doesn't happen often, but when it does, it hurts. And I was in, at this point with the ad, I was in at three, uh, sorry, 297 with 16,000 shares. The target for me was uh, a tap of $4, which was the 200 moving average. That would have been a $16,000 winner. Uh, but, that didn't happen. It dropped all the way back down to two and I stopped out on the way back down and I lost $9,000 on it. So, you know, that's a pretty good size loss. And here's the thing, when you're trading with 16,000 shares, you can't use stop orders. You can't use stop orders because you can't sell in one order. You can't sell 16,000 shares in one block. You've got to piece out of it. And so, you know, of course I piece out of it, um, you know, trying to sell at 4, 4, 59, 40, 50, 43, 23, you know, I, I'm selling as it goes down and I'm, I'm not getting good fills. So with a stop, if you use an actual stop order, you would get destroyed by the market makers. So once you get to the point of trading with big size, you have to be able to uh, handle, uh, you know, not using uh, stop orders, but this is the downside. Um, again, guys, you know, th this is, right now, you're, you're kind of seeing the extremes of my strategy. Last month at this time, two days where I made $60,000. And that's being really aggressive. Not any different from today. Today, the market was just not on my side. So today's a day where I was really aggressive and it didn't work out. And so this is, you know, the downside of that. Now, if you're trading with a tenth of the share size as me, uh, you know, then your, your profits and losses will be, uh, you know, a tenth of this number. So, or, you know, relatively speaking. So Jagex, that was a total fail. I just... You know, it it faked me out. I thought because it was squeezing up so quickly that it would continue and it just didn't. So I gave back some profit on that one. And my first trade of the day was SLS. This was on our watch list for a gap and go stock. And again, you know, this is this is gapping up with news. I get in it at 685 and 695 with 7,500 shares and it promptly drops to 650. You know, it... The gap and go strategy uh, works most of the time, but 
there are times where you'll see this type of thing happen. And so I lost 2,700 bucks on that. So with these two trades, I was down 12,000 on the day. And I was like, I'm done for the day. I'm not gonna take any more trades. Um, and, you know, this is always that thing of I should have followed, you know, the God dang rules because I got back in um, to CODX. I started to get FOMO. I see CODX squeeze up from 350 to four. And, you know, I, I wasn't in it because I, I just, you know, had just taken this big loss. And then it goes to 450, to 475, to five. And I'm like, my God, you've got to be kidding me. This thing is just running and I'm, I'm missing it. FOMO, emotions, they're running higher and higher and higher. Next thing you know, it taps for uh, 545 and is halted. And this does the same thing. It halts and then it drops. On the drop, I got in at um, 518. Let's see, let me scroll down. I got in at 518 and 523 and 524. I got in with 7,500 shares. It, let's see, I got in um, right out of the halt and it drops to 480 and I'm down 3,000 bucks. And I was like, you know what? At this point, I, I was like, at a place where I was like, I'm just gonna set a stop at 450 and I'm gonna walk away. And if I come back in three hours and it's at $8, then I'm a hero. And if I come back and it stopped out, then, you know, whatever. So I just, you know, that's kind of, so that's where you see that emotions now, cause I'm at the kind of extremes of my p &L, the emotions are starting to pick up more and more. And that's where the trades become less and less calculated. They become more impulsive, more aggressive. And that's when you start to snowball and go further into the red, almost always. Now, sometimes you do get a bailout. And on this one, I had 10,000 shares uh, at a 537 average. And I held through the move to 594. So that's about $7,000. But I didn't sell it. I didn't sell it. I held it. Because I wanted to see it break over $6. And being up 7,000 did not get me out of the hole that wasn't enough. And so instead of taking the $7,000 profit and getting out, I held through this consolidation saying, thinking, you know, all right, it's consolidating. Um, you know, and it's, it looks good for a move up to 684, which would be all time highs back here. So that's the level that I was watching. And, uh, you know, if that had happened, I, I would have gotten the bailout, you know, I would have finished the day up two, $3,000. And I would have had a, you know, twelve, fourteen, fifteen thousand dollar winner on CODX. But instead, it dropped on these two candles right here, broke the bottom of the flag, and uh, I didn't want to stop out. And then I finally stopped out when I was at pretty much my max loss of four thousand dollars on it. You know, so this is, um, you know, this is the the life of being a um, aggressive momentum breakout trader. Uh, you know, it's, I, I'm very, very fortunate. I'm sitting, even after today, I'm up 268 or $65,000 on the year. I've got nothing to complain about. You know, I've, you know, I'm very successful, but, uh, this is part of the deal. When you step up to the plate and, and you get aggressive, you're going to have the big green days and those are awesome. Uh, but then you're going to have the red days. And so, you know, one of the things that I say about trading is you have to take um, the good with the bad. And today is no doubt, you know, the bad, right? Having a day where you lose 16,000 bucks is, is not going to be the highlight of your year, the highlight of your month. It's going to take me, you know, probably a couple weeks uh, to dig myself out of this hole. Granted, if we have really strong momentum next week, you know, I could make back 16,000 in one day. My best day is $40,000 a profit. So it doesn't mean I can't bounce back quick. But if you think about how I feel right now on the lows of, you know, not only did I lose, you know, 16,000 today, I had a red day yesterday, I lost three grand. So I'm now down 19,000 in two days. And that feels very low. That feels very discouraging, feels very disappointing. And it's like, you know, dang, you know, what did I, why did I get so aggressive? It's the beginning of the month. And, you know, this is when it's time to build the cushion, not swing for the fences. Momentum hasn't been good the last three, four days. You know, all, all these things are running through my head, uh, you know, but I stepped up to the plate, got aggressive and, you know, took this um, good size loss. 
But when I look at my metrics, and we'll just you know pull them up, and this is what I do anytime I have a big loss. I mean, really, it's like it's like clockwork. I look at my metrics, and I ask myself, what am I doing right, and what am I doing wrong? And these aren't updated. Uh, I haven't updated them in like the last week, but uh, you know, just looking at the big picture. Let's step back and look at the big picture. Gross profit, $934,000 on TraderView right now. $836,000. Let's just start, you know, back at January 1st, 2017. Filter, all right, 615,000. So, you know, be back around 600 grand. Um, You look at the win-loss days, you know, you, you, you look at the metrics and you start to feel confident that, okay, yes, today was one of those days that, um, you know, is a little bit of a abnormality. It's a little bit of a, a swing, but this is, um, you know, this is life and I will bounce back. Uh, I'm trying to find, the one that I'm trying to find is my drop, my max drawdown. Um, uh, where is it? Detailed, maybe. Um no, I, I can't find it right now, but um, I don't always, this isn't always the easiest to use. But what, what I was looking for is, oh, here we go. So cumulative P&L right here, um, you know, that's that's how much I've made, whatever, since I started this account. So back here a year and a half ago, $500 in the account. So, you know, three days in, I'm at $125, right? And I've grown the account, grown the account, grown the account. Had this long period of sideways consolidation. I broke out of it. Boom. Big move up. Sideways consolidation. A couple big red days through here, as you can see, and move up. A big red day here and a move up. You know, so these are the red days. Today I'm on a dip. I'm on a low. Um, and the lows always feel worse emotionally than the ups feel good. You know, it's like that emotional swing. It goes deeper red than it goes up into the green. But. You know, today's just going to be another one of those dips and I'll rally and we'll look back at this chart two months from now and I'll, you know, probably be up here or something like that. And it'll be like, oh, yeah, that, yeah, I remember that $16,000 day. Yeah, I was a little too aggressive. I had the, you know, my tunnel vision. I, I lost sight of the bigger picture. I got a little emotional, but I bounced back. So when I was getting started trading, one of the big things for me was was diving into my numbers like this and asking myself, what am I doing right? What am I doing wrong? And by doing that, it helped me, um, you know, during those periods where my account was kind of slimming down a little bit, it helped me shed the strategies that weren't working. You know, it helped me sort of see, okay, this is what I'm doing that's not working. Uh, you know, let's say trading stocks over $20. That's not working for me, so I'm going to cut out those $11,000 in losses. I'm going to trim it, and I'm going to focus on what is working, this area. You know, the volume, what's working, you know, being more aggressive. Okay, I'm going to continue to be aggressive. What price range is working? Okay, you know, it's, it's or, well, that's not price range. Um, you know, but, but you know what I mean. You know, you just kind of keep narrowing it down until you've refined, you know, what really, really works for you. Um, but... You know, even once you do that and you've been trading for five years and, you know, whatever, been trading as long as I have, you'll have days where you throw logic out the window and you give in to emotion, you know. And so today's a day where instead of capitalize on the, mo on the, on the FOMO, I fell victim to it. And I let myself be too aggressive and, uh, you know, I got stubborn and, you know, I kind of said, look, I can afford to... I can afford to hold through the pullback because my account's big and blah, 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 blah. And that makes you sloppy. And you're not going to come back and look at this thing tomorrow. And, you know, Monday is probably $8. And I'll be like, dang it. You know, how am I the guy that, you know, blah, 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 blah. But that's the way it goes sometimes. So, you know, you guys, uh, you know, unlike a lot of the traders out there that show you the green days and never show you these red days, I like you to see both sides of the coin because this is you know, the life of a trader. You've got ups and you've got downs, and we try to take them in stride, but, uh, you know, these are these are certainly not the easiest days. This is a very easy job from a uh, physical perspective, right? It's physically, I just sit here and punch keys. Uh, you know, skill-wise, it's not that hard to learn, 
really. You got you guys go through a 90-day class and you've got the skill to trade. That's about it. You know, it's pretty easy to learn. Um, but the thing that will flare up from time to time are those emotions, the feelings of um, uh, uh, FOMO, the fear of missing out, the greed, the um, you know just the fear, all of that stuff. That's that's what makes the market move. Uh, and sometimes you're on the right side of it, and sometimes you're on the wrong side. And today's a day where uh, I was on the wrong side, and I I could have been profitable on on every single one of. Every single one of my trades, except for SLS, I could have been profitable on. On Jagex, I got in at 350 and it went up to a high of, uh, I got in at 250 and it hit a high of 320. I saw you guys saying, yeah, nice, I made $2,000 on Jagex. I made this amount on Jagex. It's because you guys were taking profit. I was being more aggressive. I was buying as it was going up. Codex, I was up $7,000 on this. I didn't take profit, right? Some of you guys got in down here at $4.415 on this little one minute micro pullback, which is a great entry. It's one that we teach in the classes. And you guys did well on it. You know, I lost $4,300 despite the stock being up as much as it, as it is. So, you know, it, it goes to show that having skill and going through the training and all that stuff isn't always enough. You've got to make sure your emotions are in check. And, you know, today's a day where I just, uh, I, I wasn't there 100%. So, um, you know, I was up late last night. I was, uh, you know, doing emails until 2.30 in the morning. Maybe that's part of it. I mean, that's not that uncommon for me. So I, I think it's just a day where, you know, I, I just wasn't, I don't know. The market wasn't on my side. I was too aggressive. And it's the perfect storm that just went the wrong way. So, you know, you try to compartmentalize it a little bit, you know, just... Bottle it up, you know, into that little bottle, put the cork on and just bury it really deep, really right kind of, you know, just right behind your heart, just deep, 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 deep there. And and it'll come back at you in about, you know, 30, 40 years and that's all right. But for right now, just bottle that up. Just, just you know, put it down there. So, uh, you know, for me, it's kind of like, I just, th I just try to compare it to um, other careers and things like that, um, you know, the deadliest catch when those guys, I mean, I think $16,000 for guys running multi-million dollar fishing operations, it's, it's nothing. You know, when they set an entire string of pots and they forget to bait them properly and they have to go back and pick them all up, how much does that cost them in fuel and all this stuff, right? When they go and hit a sandbar and, you know, screw up their, you know, propeller, how much does that cost them to fix it? 10000 bucks. You know, it's like, so... It's easy to personalize and to feel like, oh my God, this is that. But um, you know, my my business as a day trader, because I'm a self-employed day trader, um, you know, it's a it's a million dollar business. And this year, if I have a good year, I'll be in you know, I guess five hundred, six hundred thousand dollar range. But uh, you know, over the course of years of trading, it's made millions of dollars. So yeah, I'm down sixteen grand today. I'm not going to try to brush it under the carpet and say it's not a big deal. It is. But once you've reviewed it, once you've analyzed it, once you've given yourself the kind of breakdown of what you did right, what you did wrong, you got to put it behind you and you got to get back on the horse. And that's what I'll do on Monday morning. So anyways, that's it for me. Um, and, you know, I hope this is helpful for you guys. Those of you watching on Facebook, watching on YouTube, uh, you know, give me the thumbs up for doing the video and um you know throw comments below i'll come back and answer them through the weekend and uh we'll be back at it on on monday morning and uh you guys will uh, just keep you know watching over my shoulder and learning uh, as we go learning from the ups and learning from the downs all right so that's it for me i hope you guys all have a great weekend get some rest relax and we'll be back at it first thing monday morning all right see you guys on monday if you're still watching you must have really enjoyed that video so why not subscribe and get email alerts anytime I upload new content? Remember, when you subscribe, you become a member of the Warrior Trading family.